you know how I became a filmmaker? I don't know if you want to record this, no, but, but I became a filmmaker because I went to um, South America, I went to Brazil with my family. And uh, I had a band when I was 15. And in the basement of the Sheridan Hotel in, um, in Rio, there was a, a bar band and I hung out down in the bar. And so I asked these guys, you know, how they got this gig, because I just thought it was fantastic. And they said, well, the Sheridan Corporation pays them, pays them to go every month to different resorts um, to play in bars. And I thought, my God, this is like <laughs> perfect. So they gave me, they told me who to contact. And I sent my, a cassette of my, of my band to the Sheridan Corporation in Boston. And a few months later, I got back um, a letter from them saying, um, Ron, we really like your band and your music, but you have to be 21 <laughs> to play in a bar. Um, and so I dropped my career as a musician and, um, and became a filmmaker. What was the music like? There was, you know, was another way to get girls. Yeah. I mean, being in a band, was, was like, the idea was to get girls when you're 15. And so, and I, I remember when I was making my Super 8 films that I impressed those girls in my junior, junior high school class, so I just continued with it. This is before you went to, you did some film at U of T, right? Or was it? Um, yeah, I went to U of T. I didn't really study film because I went to, uh, I, I met Elia Kazan. Yeah. Um, really early on, uh, and trying to decide if I should go to film school or not, and he told me to study everything but film, yeah. and then make films, and that's what I did. So I studied the liberal arts. I went to Bennington College in Vermont, and uh, then I went. I did a year at York, um, and then I and then I graduated at U of T. But I didn't take film classes. But I did take classes with Joe Medjuk. Okay. Um, who was uh, one of my profs and became a really good friend of mine, who hired me later as a screenwriter for Ivan Reitman yeah. after Ghostbusters. And um, I also took a class with Joseph Skorecki, who just passed away. Yeah, who, the, ago, yeah. yeah. And which was really sad because um, he, he was profoundly influential on a lot of people, Adam Agoyan, um, others who took his class in, in Czech cinema. I've read, uh, I've read his fiction, like Engineer Human Soul, but I didn't read it. He has two books on Czech cinema, right? Um, you know, I don't know his books on Czech cinema. Oh, okay. but he did uh, teach? Uh, he, did, he taught a class, yeah. Um, the one book that I loved was the jazz saxophone, I, and I remember we bonded over jazz, because at that time I was working at Sam the Recommend in the jazz department, and uh, I think that's how I bonded with Joe Manchuk as well, because he was also a jazz freak. And my first film was about jazz musicians called Imagine the Sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at the backpack briefcase thing that they roped you into at U of T. I was doing my master's. Oh, no kidding. And it was hilarious how like, the amount of U of T like, education you had, and especially film education, was so like, non-existent. And yet they somehow parlayed that into this. Like, that was a weird panel to begin with. Well, in 1980, when I graduated at the University of Toronto, you co couldn't major in film, yeah. and because film was the equivalent of knitting, and um, you know, no one was really serious about um, cinema, um, but there were cinephiles. Yeah. Um, Salem Alaton was was um, became a uh, critic uh, for the uh, uh, an entertainment writer uh, for the Globe and Mail. Um, Anna McGoyan um, and others who were just, you know, inspired by people like Joe Medjuk and, you know, Bart Testa yeah, and Kay Armitage yeah. and, you know, it was a great, um, um, you know, uh, uh, group of people um, back then. But I, I, I majored in uh, political philosophy. <laughs> that got me nowhere. <laughs>